Today I play the silent on Ascension 20. Are three blade dances good enough, or will they clog my turn ones? Let's find out. Random rare relics, one of my favorite ways to start a, a uh, run of Slay the Spire. So I'm probably going to click on that button. I don't see any colorless card options here or anything like that either. I've seen a little bit of uh, Mechabellum fireworks. I like the mech theme, although auto battlers really aren't my thing that much. I've been um, <clears throat> off stream. I've been back into a, a battle tech kick personally, so I definitely have mechs on the mind. Bomb Kisador says one of the biggest traps I find is relying on after image for block early and then having beat of death take it all away. You really need to make sure each of your cards is putting out a, a value of at least 10 or so if you want to tackle the late game of A20 Spire, either to overcome uh, Time Eater or to overcome Heart. You need each card to have a, a true value to it. You can't, can't win by simply playing more cards. You have to make the cards more valuable individually. How's it going, Forever Faint? Welcome, welcome. You're catching me on a bit of an off day, so I apologize if the voice ain't quite up to snuff. But uh, the Spire Runs are certainly doing just fine. Incense Burner's definitely a strong one. Careful consideration of the number the Burner says can get us some seriously good results here in Act 1. I'm seeing an interesting path here. What if we use this to take on the Burning Elite in Act 1 and set ourselves up for the rest of the run? That would mean not hitting a store Act 1, but I suppose I'm okay with that. Let's just do it. Incense Burner, very strong verse, uh, versus some of the elites the Silent has the most trouble with. Uh, Grumlin Knob and Lagavulin in particular. We can essentially just counter. I hit you. Take one here. Up to stuff, indeed. <laughs> yes, the voice is up to stuff. Okay, we'll break your block. And in essentially every single fight, it will behoove us to manipulate the incense burner to a favorable value. And for the short term, we just want to be in tangible turn one, probably. Not that I can kill this turn anyway. Yeah, burner on five will do just fine. Strength potion means that first elite is already looking like they're going to have a bad time. First floor well laid plans is very interesting. This could be a card you never see on your silent run at all. So to get offered it so early is pretty potent. Especially when it's up against two very mediocre damage commons. Quick Slash and Flying Knee are fine, but I don't love them. And I'd much rather take a Flying Knee after I have a well laid plan. So I'm going to go power first here. We have an incense burner after all. I think that's also going to make this a bit better. Um, if I wanted, I could take the money and go to the shop here. But then we're not able to go for three elites this act. So I say no to you, Mr. Serpent. Do we say no to the slime goop? I'm greedy, so I'll say yes. Let's do this. So, incense burner blocking for five there. That's quite valuable. Pretty lousy turn two draw, though. But we full block turn three, so it's A-OK. -okay. Our next fight is likely to be an elite. To tackle Gremlin Knob and Lagavulin, we want to be intangible on turn three. So we want the incense burner to be set to three. Looks like that might not happen here. Because we won't be able to full block on this turn. No, not at all. Okay, so incense on two is not bad. Good for centuries, actually. We have two very good potions, so I'm not too worried here. Eviscerate is a much better first attack card. Slice not too bad either, but Eviscerate really slaps, hitting three times for seven damage and working really well with the draw and discard kit of Silent. It's one of the best attacks to pick up early on the Silent. 
We additionally get to transform something or upgrade something, our choice, going into this first elite. How can she slap? Yeah, somebody wanted to see a discard deck? This is a really good start. <clears throat> well aid plans and eviscerate both encourage the draw discard. So we're gonna be upgrading the eviscerate anyway. We could use the event to upgrade well laid plans. I think I'd rather get the transform. <clears throat> Corpse explosion. Yeah, that's why you transform. That's gonna be an explosive boost to our deck power. Hey there, Rude Abega. I'm glad you turn it in time for this corpse explosion. Yeah, we could have just as easily gotten like a setup or something, right? Transform can be risky, but I think it's more often worth it than not. And now we'll upgrade... Actually, we could upgrade the Corpse Explosion, but I think we will upgrade uh, Eviscerate here. Now, taking our dad jokes back to our roots there. Although sometimes such jokes can be a little bitter to swallow. Is upgrading the Corpse Explosion ever worth it? I think it's actually quite a good upgrade. Three more poison is tantamount to three more damage per turn. So over two turns, this is six additional damage to the target you're trying to kill. Three turns, it's nine additional damage. And in boss fights, it could be quite a bit more than that. Pretty dang powerful. Uh, and, and definitely a high priority upgrade. Probably what we'll upgrade before the boss or early act two. Assuming I don't need to rest, which we might. Excellent. This is good. Do I need to Strength Potion? I don't think so. I think we can keep both of these potions for the second elite. We definitely want to wake up Legavulin turn one here, because of the incense burner being set to five. Just very happy this isn't Gremlin Knob, mainly. Although this turn is terrible. Maybe I do need Strength Potion with this draw. Dang it. I'm just kind of wondering about Gremlin Ob as our next elite. With poison, with well-laid plans, we should be okay here. Can use the attack potion if we need to. But hopefully we won't have to. It's gonna go well-laid plans, defend, defend here. I don't know if this is enough. Sure doesn't feel like enough. Hmm. Yeah, let's use the attack potion now. Shets is 12. But it's bad on the redraw. Let's just take the 11 from the backstab. Twenty-seven's got to be more than this. If, for this fight, I actually do wish we'd upgraded the Corpse Explosion and not the uh, Eviscerate, but it is what it is. Deep Survivor? Yeah. Okay, this will work. We're actually intangible next turn, so we don't need to kill this turn. Although we do need to kill soon here. I want this to go. Uh, this would deal 21, bringing it to 19. Then we do 6 plus 5. Or we Corpse Explosion now, do 654. This will only do 15. 
So no, we want to play Eviscerate first. Okay, <clears throat> I'm okay with that. I think we take the one to deal two here. So we're doing 11 damage. We need to do six more. So three strikes will do it, or Eviscerate will do it, or Corpse Explosion will do it. Though that does mean I should retain Strike. We could also use the Strength Potion if we draw really badly. We did not. Okay. A little spooky. We've lost um, more health than we were comfortable with. And we did not set up Incense Burner for the next Elite either. But we did prevail. We get a Dagger Throw, which is excellent with uh, Eviscerate. Kept the Strength Potion. And we now have an upgraded Neutralize and an upgraded Strike. And we have to defeat the Jaw Worm. It's actually pretty good. We can get another potion here. Also, I think our deck's in really good shape, so Jaw Worm should be easy. We can also use this to set up the Incense Burner. Which is perhaps more important. We really do want it on three? Well, Burner on two protects us from the sentries, which is quite nice. And I think we can get a three turn Gremlin Ob kill with the Strength Potion. So let's let's use it on two here. Or set Incense Burner to four, rather, which will be turn two intangibility. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm okay with this. Also saves me a lot of time. Not changing it from this number. Acrobatics. Definitely the card we want with Eviscerate here. Might be tempting to go Blade Dance, especially with the Strength Potion, but I think long term, this Acrobatics is far more valuable. Gimme. Get a Mummy Hand. Whenever we play a power card, a random card is free. Very cool with well laid plans already, but the long term potential is huge. Exciting. All right, elite number two is the sentries. So incense burner set up correctly here. Turn one's a bit awkward as we draw both corpse explosion and eviscerate. I think we want a corpse explosion first. You play corpse explosion on an enemy with artifacts. The effects get applied in order here. So the six poison will be blocked, but the secondary effect will be applied. Let's do this. Targeting the one with the most health. That way, when it dies, the others die as well. And now we just want to focus damage on this back sentry. Uh, interesting. Okay. Probably better off just playing the strike. We have to end this fight soon. Take two more. Interesting. Hmm. Wasn't expecting to redraw into this, actually. Could take five here. I think I'm just going to double block. Keep the strike. See what happens. Only 21. Which means we do need to use the Strength Potion to not die here. The good news is we don't die. Had we drawn five days, actually we'd just be strike dead. So, let's be glad that didn't happen. This is a power. This does decent damage. Honestly, don't think we need any of it. Skip. I say skip. Hello, Lady in Blue. You're actually 
perfectly timed. Wondering how he's going to get through a burning elite with no potions. Um, I'll take three. What do you got? Those are good potions. Those are very good potions. Thank you, lady. Two rare potions. The Entropic Brew and a Fairy in a Bottle. I think the right play here is to pick up the Entropic Brew and then drink it to figure out what two potions contains within. Then we can choose the best two out of these four. Which I think is going to be... Flex Potion, Fairy in a Bottle. Considering that the next elite is either Legavulin or Gremlin Knob. We know it won't be sentries, so we don't care about the explosive potion that much. Cool, that means we're on track to just be fine here. I foresee no issues whatsoever. Hmm. I was hoping to draw towards Eviscerate there. Do I Dagger Throw take three? Yeah. Aha! Easy peasy. Good times. Unmastered and Venom appears. Whenever an attack deals unblocked damage, apply poison. And we have a mummified hand. Honestly, let's do it. It's weird, but I like it. The mummified hand makes it a lot better. Definitely. This is a really good turn for Flex Potion. Looks like it's better to eviscerate than Corpse Explosion here. Block for one. And we just want to stay alive here. No need to use the fairy when we don't have to. I'd rather keep it for turn two of Guardian. Art of War, another energy relic. We got three in a row here. Mummy Hand, Happy Flower, Art of War with uh, well-laid plans. I'm pretty sure means that we do not need a boss relic that provides energy anymore. We can take almost anything. Am I willing to take a setup, Endless Agony, or Concentrate? Not really. Concentrate goes with discard, but you need a lot of card draw for Concentrate to be good. And we do not have that much card draw. Pyramid in the boss chest? I'm hoping so. It's a good reason not to upgrade the uh, well laid plans. I'm thinking either Corpse Explosion and Venom or Acrobatics at the moment. Endless Agony is pretty okay here. I actually like Endless Agony a lot in this sort of deck. Let's take it. It's some good front load. Oh my. Good. I think we do that now. Sure. Sure. And you're dead. Would be nice to set up incense burner for uh, two here, but it's not how this fight works. Guess there's no benefit in being intangible turn one. Hold on. Can wait a minute here. Okay. 
Slimy is back. I almost like it. I think we're pretty happy just not taking more cards, though. Not even Bane. Fewer cards is better. And if we're winning the boss fight, then we have no reason to add more cards. In Act 1 is usually, usually my philosophy. And I think we are beating this boss. Surely. Surely this is winning, yes? This is just explosion, strike, strike. I think that's what we do here. Tempting to acrobatics there. Oh, it was acrobatics. Okay, we just used the fairy. Fairy will. That's what the fairy was for. Keep this even though we're intangible next turn. It's definitely tempting to keep the eviscerate here. It's a fun draw. Okay, I'll just keep neutralize. Keep Art of War too. Double neutralize to the face. Once you get above about 20, 30 poison on Guardian, you just win the fight. get burner set up for act two. Not too bad. I'm a little sad the fairy has departed, but uh, otherwise everything's great here. Let's see. Burst tools unload. I gotta say unload, although... Unmastered is not that tempting with uh, what we have, although it can do interesting things with Eviscerate. Tools of the Trade is far more broadly useful. It gives us the once per turn discard to make the Eviscerate good and immediately discount something with Mummy Hand, while also being upgradable to zero cost itself. I like that a lot. Burst is also pretty good here. We can dupe Corpse Explosion or dupe a discard skill. Not bad with uh, Will Aid plans either. But tools is the most broadly useful, I think, because of Mummy Hand. Let's grab tools here. We are offered energy. No runic pyramid for us. If we want a non-energy boss relic, we can take the Calling Bell. And I think we could get away with the Calling Bell here. It might even be the best option, actually. Coffee Dripper gives us more energy per turn. And honestly, well, you do like that in a silent deck. Coffee is one of the easiest, peasiest ways to get more energy for silence, and with the amount of energy we can already generate would allow us to really go crazy by just playing tons of cards each turn. I think Coffee Dripper could be very good here. Let's do it. Yeah, we can now just take every acrobatics, every backflip that we see. We've got lots of money, and I'd like to use it to remove two starter cards, and we can easily do that. You don't want to go too elite heavy here in Act 2, although Corpse Explosion makes it kind of viable. This looks like an excellent start overall. Yeah, definitely want to go to these two shops. We can dunk two strikes, and this deck will look a lot better. 
Without footwork, though, we're still going to struggle to block a little bit. Chosen's also definitely a problem for us. Uh, but we can make this work, right? Survivor, discard the Ascender's Bane, Invenom guaranteed makes Eviscerate free. There we go. Souffle. This is better than playing the strikes currently. Might not be able to stop this turn three hit though. Not quite, huh? We only take three. That's fine. Second Eviscerate is here. Sneaky Strike also here. Both of these are very good. I think this deck would love a second Eviscerate. Welcome. McGillicuddy, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy, cozy Sub Club. Ooh. We can get Strength on turn one to make our opening hands more deadly, or we can transform two cards, turning two strikes into new random cards. Can also take Jax to gain strength, although I don't like that much with Coffee Dripper. This is a pretty good, uh, pretty good run for mutagenic strength. Especially here in turn, in Act 2, we really want to be able to kill enemies quickly. Let's take the mutagenic strength here. Gain 3 strength on turn 1, and lose it at the end of the first turn. Quite a bit of utility to that. The damage. Let's bonk this one. One that we know will attack us next turn. Get the neutralize there. Perfect. Corpse explosion. Why you shouldn't have. All right. Are you liking the uh, strength up on turn one? Cloak and Dagger, Dodge and Roll, Slice. We're really ideally hoping for upgraded cards here, or card draw cards, and these ain't those, so... No. Ah. Boat Thingy is good, though. Boat Thingy gives us guaranteed block. We could also, I don't know, buy a Kunai. I guess buying a Kunai is kind of a good idea. Ah. One of the best ways for Silent to gain dexterity, we're already able to play many attacks per turn quite easily. Uh, who's our act boss? It is Collector. Hmm. Ah. It's also 20 gold cheaper than the boat thingy? Sure. We're probably not going to the shop then, huh? Well, if we're not going to the shop, that means we have to go this way. That's kind of iffy, too. If I was going to do that, I would definitely need to buy an explosive potion. I don't actually mind going straight into the elite fight because the incense burner is on five. All right, heck it. No. All right, it is the three slavers, and we are intangible turn one for this otherwise very deadly turn. Excellent news. Also feeling really justified in our acquisition of the mutagenic strength here, for sure. 
Do it like this. Corpse explosion. Yeah, I was going to say we might not have actually wanted to kill that guy on turn one, but we can't take the risk. This looks like it will backfire, huh? Ah, uh, it's a bummer, actually. That really backfired, killing the for the back guy on turn one. Ouch. And now I can't set up a burner anymore, huh? Hmm. That didn't go ideally. Uh, Blade Dance Plus with Kunai and Ink Bottle, anyone? Definitely. I mean, Bullet Tide might be uh, unmastered and all, but it's it's no Blade Dance here, that's for sure. And we are going to go this way. We're going to do it. Even though the health situation is getting a little spooky. Chaos, thanks for the four months. You're heckin' welcome for the enjoyable distractions. Keep watching, I'll keep streaming. Perfection. Alright, starting to feel like a much more capable silent deck now. Here we go. We do Corpse Explosion Eviscerate. I like it. I do double eviscerate? Hold on. Yes, but I can't also invent him. That's fine. And what's our next fight gonna be? Maybe I'll go for a third elite here. Be fun. Flower and ink bottle set up pretty well. I think we could take another elite, okay. Ooh, deflect and escape plan are both very good with a kunai. I like the deflect. Nice, reliable, zero cost block. Let's take it. Why do I not discard a Cinder's Bane more often? I try to avoid making a habit of it. A Cinder's Bane exhausts at the end of your turn if it's in your hand. So if you keep it in your hand until the end of turn, you can guarantee that you won't draw it again. If you discard it, you'll see it again in the draw pile each time you shuffle through. So ultimately, in any fight where you're going to cycle through the deck multiple times, you really want to get rid of the Ascender's Bane to avoid drawing it again. Range Merging Accident, thanks for four months of support. Toxic Egg Kunai, GG. All skills will be upgraded. By the way, I have a prayer wheel. Uh, which means we actually just want to go max combats now. Screw elites. Look at card rewards. Double upgraded skill card rewards to try to find lots of stuff. That's pretty cool. Also means we don't need to risk life and limb in an elite fight unnecessarily. Definitely with this combination, we want to be looking at lots of card rewards. Many as we can find. Offer kunai. In Loth hungry. Feed in Loth. Well, the Whetstone's no problem, though. Whetstone was only a one-time pickup upgrade. We do not lose the upgrades if we gift this to uh, Inloth here. That means we're going to be at triple chance to find rare cards from combat rewards, seeing two card rewards per fight per snake plant. 
Although if I just die immediately, I guess that's a problem, huh? Okay, that's not too bad. bad. Not bad at all. Snake Plant might seem really intimidating at first, but if you if you can do a lot of damage quickly, it's really not that bad a fight. I'm going to set up uh, Burner to 5 here. I see it messed up with ink bottle now. Get our first rare card from uh oh from uh in lost gift. Wow, what a choice. Prepared tools to trade leg sweep plus. Concentrate plus. Don't want that concentrate. I'll take, uh, I think I'll take a prepared plus here. Although, again, all of these are very good. Actually, that leg sweep is probably too good to not take. Give me that. Chosen Cultist, a little spooky. Although the corpse explosion makes this a lot easier. Do I just DPS down the Chosen? Kill the Cultist with the explosion? Or do I DPS the Cultist down? I think we DPS the Chosen. With all this extra turn one damage. Shame about the burner, though. Turns a bit spooky. Once we draw a viscerate, we do draw a viscerate, which is just enough. Six times three plus seven. It's twenty-five, right? That sounds right. Yeah. Good. One hundo. Acrobatics plus. Setup plus. Well, we definitely want an acrobatics, that's for sure. Definitely want an acrobatics. Second energy potion. I think we'll trust the colorless potion. And I am going to go to that shop. We are. Okay. One last hallway fight. Another one that doesn't threaten us too much early is good. This fight. Probably should have played Acro before Eviscerate. This is fine, though. Do Blade Dance defend Lake Sweep? Maybe better to Art of War this turn. Leg sweep, defend, defend. Try to kill the baseball next turn. That seems pretty reasonable. Keep acro blade dance. Discard 
that for now. Okay, guaranteed eviscerate. Good. Get hacked. Burner versus Collector. You want Burner to be on two or th one or two. That way you're intangible on turn. No, not one or two. Zero or one, excuse me. You want to be intangible on turn five or six. These are the first two turns after you're debuffed by Collector. I think we want it on one. Yeah, because turn one is summon, turn two and three are random, turn four is the mega, mega debuff, so you want to be intangible turn five. Or if your health is really low, turn two or turn three, also acceptable. Uh, we also get bonus happy flower value if we set it to one, so all the more reason to do that. That'll certainly do. How do we feel about Infinite Blades with Kunai Mummy Hand? And in Venom. It's not bad, actually. I think we like Dodge and Roll Plus quite a lot with the Kunai. That'll take. Bad with Art of War, that's true. We're already bad with Art of War. Sneaky Strike is also just fine, right? Although I really feel like we don't need any more attacks beyond the ones we already have. I think that tells me I should probably skip. But Blessing of the Forge... Doesn't do a whole lot. Cool. Adrenaline Plus and Master of Strategy Plus that we can't afford. After Image that we can afford. Seems pretty potent. Or card removal. After Image definitely doing a lot in a deck like this. Although semi-redundant with Kunai. Yeah, that is a that is a somewhat tempting after image. I don't think it's actually that good. Although it does give us a nice head start versus time eater and hearts. Exit Bunny, thanks for 11 months of support. I'm, I'm actually pretty thoroughly convinced we want to remove over adding an after image. <laughs> and we want to get energy upgrades like the tools, the trade, and the Envenom. Start with tools here. I like it. All right, in the second, fair enough. Well, that could be a good thing anyway. Let's go Corpse Explosion, Blade Dance, keep Deflect, Leg Sweep. I think we're fine here. Already got two Dexterity. Did a bunch of damage. Have our best block cards retained in hand. Have well aid plans in play. And have potions if we need them, which I honestly don't think we will. Leg Sweep and Venom? Leg Sweep in case Collector attacks us. And Venom in case they don't. They don't. Cool. We can play the Envenom then. Works for me.
They actually don't want to kill this torch head immediately because Collector is going to resummon. When Collector resummons, she summons. They summon back to two minions on the field. So if there's only one minion alive, you only get one new creature. And now we can use Corpse Explosion, which I think I just discarded to kill them both potentially here. Why I might have discarded Corpse Explosion is anyone's guess. Moderately okay turn for Dodger Roll. Yeah, I'll do it this way. It's fine. This send this. This fight's pretty much over. Oh no, a tremendous amount of damage. Whatever will I do? Already get a leg sweep, so we use the neutralize on the little one. Here's where Kunai carries. Kunai GG, as they say. Glorious. Those are some juicy rare cards. I particularly like Malaise. This is a really good answer to Heart and Time Eater, two fights that we struggle with currently. Burst can definitely be good with some of the other stuff. I don't think we need two Corpse Explosions. Let's take a Malaise here. I really like the art of Malaise in general. I also think a Dexterity Potion could be very important for our late game. We're offered a Pandora's box. Transform all strike and defend cards. We only have seven remaining starter cards, but seven transforms with a Toxic Egg is still pretty powerful. And we have some pretty good added block cards to make not losing the to make losing the defense not so much of a problem. So that's a pretty good Pandora's box. Not the best, but definitely not bad. I wouldn't totally dislike Black Star here either. I think we can handle the Elites of Act 3 pretty easily. Exclamation point, uh, Master Sheet is what you're looking for, I think, Heligonian. Does In-Law's Gift affect Pandora's box? No. What's in the box? Lots of upgraded skills. Blur Plus is our block option. We also get Outmaneuver, Terror, Bullet Time. And one of two Riddle With Holes. Interesting. Maybe some mastery candidates here. I like that. Been a pretty okay black star. We do like regular combats a whole lot, actually. We do would like to prioritize those. Maybe I'll just go five in a row here. Since they're offering double card rewards with higher rare chance. Combats are uh, a okay by me. Well, that's a pretty good bullet time now, isn't it? I suppose that it is. All right, bullet time. Show them what you can do.
Beautiful. Wait, I miscalculated there. <laughs> Shoot. I assume they were all dying. That was not true. So I've misaligned our burner now. That's okay. I don't think it'll be a big deal. This is getting at it for sure. So is this. Excellent cards. Truly excellent cards. Wait, this riddle with holes is kind of amazing, huh? Kind of. Just a little bit. The turn one. Ultimate power. There it is! Double riddle with holes. This is the run, Twitch chat. The faded run. Double Riddle with Holes and Venom. Let's go. I'm not going to try to take Dagger Sprays, though. I think trying to do both of those in the same run is stupid. Foolish. Too foolish. To work out. Uh, just discard this. Kill you, actually. No need to overcomplicate it. Acceptable. Better do potion. Potion indeed. Dodge and roll plus, or the after image we didn't buy. Another leg sweep. Oh my. I'm gonna take dodge and roll leg sweep. Let me have like all the blocks sorted out here. Hopefully, we're not too block heavy now. I guess that could be a thing. that one outright, but then Corpse Explosion will work. Try that. Hmm. This Terror would with Holes kill you, it'll be 20 damage. 16 plus 9, 25. I do have Envenom in play. Yes, this will kill you. That's fine.
Okay. Another leg sweep? Actually, Cloak and Dagger is very good with the Kunai. And so is another Blade Dance. Or we could take that first Concentrate. You know, we could do it. I'll take the Cloak, certainly. I'm going to go Cloak and uh, Blade Dance here. Almost good. We have duplicates of most of the important cards now. There's only a few cards I'd like to maybe get rid of. Fumes is a bit redundant. Would I take a Catalyst in this deck? Yes, I think Catalyst would be quite good. Actually, probably the best path is just keep taking uh, the card rewards, right? Honestly, yeah. Let's just keep taking double card rewards. They're very good, by and large. Please do something else. Thank you. Find this enemy not too threatening as long as you can have a, at least one attack in your hand each turn. Then you have kind of control over this fight. If they're doing an intent you can already block, then don't change what they're doing. If they're doing something you can't deal with, like the Stinky Curse, then do change what they're doing. Until it's something that you can block and then stop. Don't get greedy in this fight. Don't try to do more damage than is safe. It's the main thing. Since this enemy never scales their attack power, you can take as many turns as you want. Any multi-hit move can can turn the curse back into a, a curse again, unfortunately. you got to be a little careful of that, since it rerolls multiple times. Fight is a greed check, a consistency check, and a block check, all in one, I think. It's also a little bit of an RNG check. If this enemy wants you to die, they're they're gonna they're gonna do some mean things to you. Runic Dome makes this fight a lot scarier. Definitely. Uh, okay, play this too. Perfect. Explosion! Actually surprised we haven't seen more rare cards yet. I think a third blade dance is actually too many. Caltrops might be good. I will take a second malaise. Definitely take a second malaise. Now we have no fear of time eater whatsoever. Maybe I do take a third blade dance with uh, two malaises. You know what? Sure. Now we're cooking with gasoline. And you're all dead. Very, very, very dead. Fair card number three. Ooh, backflip. So many flechettes. There's the second in Venom. We just got double in Venom thanks to in law's gift. Let's go. Give me backflip. Double in Venom, double riddle with holes. The dream team. And this deck even has like a good chance of succeeding from the looks of it. How exciting. How absolutely exciting. Uh, let's do riddle tools. Easy. That mutagenic strength turn one is pretty powerful. Genuinely. 
Never get attacked next turn. No need to dodge a roll here. Poison per attack is actually quite a lot. Rare card number four. And get another Lake Sweep. Is an Alchemize Plus. Sure. Two leg sweeps is plenty, especially with two malaises. I don't need three. We're not going to take choke on this run. We could flood the deck with bad cards, but I don't think it's a good idea. I would try to get double flechettes at this point. I think it is decent. With the mummy hand, why was Envenom never really an upgrade priority? Because we can potentially make it zero cost with the other powers. And because we had other cost discounts that I did go for... I, I thought getting tools to trade from 1 to 0 is slightly better than getting Envenom from 2 to 1. And now that we have bullet time, I don't really care. Nice. The damage. Minus six additional strength. Keep you suitably slowed down. Next turn's the first real attack turn, right? Let's keep leg sweep bullet time. See what we can do here. Oh, we have a lot of block retained. And we're intangible. All right, well, I missed those details. Foolish. That's all right. Why are you still here? So the idea often with a bullet time is just get a handful of really good cards, play the bullet time, and go more or less wild here. Doesn't retain anything we don't want to play. Easy peasy. Rear card number five is an Adrenaline Plus. That I click on. All right, In-Law's Gift has definitely paid off. Shame I gotta take the Sapphire Key over a pair. Pairs could pretty good. And we'll go this way, I suppose. More card rewards, please. Know that we've gotten 10 additional card rewards from Prayer Wheel. So that In-Law's Gift has only found us five extra rare cards is actually kind of surprising. Seems almost low. Too low. Hmm. 
Acrobatics, huh? Oh, hello. Okay. In that case, let's do this. Cloak and Dagger looks okay. Pretty astonishing how little we've used, uh, I guess we haven't seen Singing Bowl until literally just now. How about two more Cloak and Daggers? With Double and Venom and Kunai, they're kind of the ultimate card for this deck. I'll just take them both, heck it. 40 cards, let's go. Liquid Bronze seems actually pretty good for Heart. But we're gonna keep getting new potions, so I'll swap it out. Tangible next turn seems pretty good. Five dexterity turn one, by the way. Better kill a dagger here. This works, right? With the mummy hand, we can just play all the powers in, in kind of a chain here. Yeah. Sweet. And actually, better to play leg soup than eviscerate here. Take two instead of four. That was cool. Card number six is an after image. Although again, I might just want to backflip here. I think an after, one after image is probably a good idea. Welcome. Welcome to the deck. Could upgrade that after image, or I could upgrade any of these other cards, notably acrobatics, I think being a good upgrade. Two more card awards from these nerds. This is the third time we fought Darklings this run. Kind of ridiculous, actually. And Venom is guaranteed to make Leg Sweep free. Cool. particular. Sure. 
Three three fear potions in a row? Alright, sure. Why not? Probably wanted to set up incense a bit better for Time Eater. Number eight? Wait, do you get two here? Alchemize and... Unload. Unload comes back. That's cute. I'd much rather take a Piercing Whale, though. This is not the run for Unload Mastery. Double Alchemize is just cute. Means we could be really aggro with the potions in these final fights. Question marks actually surprise. Just one more regular fight, which means, you guessed it, two more Toxic Egg card rewards with Singing Bowl. It's good stuff. Nice turn one. Is an after image in this deck. I just don't think we've drawn it yet. The deck has too many cards. There it is. It's funny. All right, turn one intangible for time is perfect, actually. The other relics aren't set up. Nine additional rare cards. We get a Calculated Gamble Plus. The second bullet time. The rare card mastery shenaniganry, thanks to Lost Gift, is ludicrous here. Double Envenom, double bullet time. Let's go. Look at these three green mastery candidates. How exciting. Got a recall here. That would be an embarrassing way to lose. All right. 45 cards into Time Eater. How do you do it? The answer is be intangible turn one and play four powers. Obviously. The exciting uh, set of cards we got so far, actually. It's Acro Second. Oh, Blur is here. Excellent news. Might as well blade dance here, yeah. Keep these two. So the idea with a deck like this is that we can scale our defense better than the time eater can scale their offense. So, uh, keep these two. And that's true even before you factor in for the fact that we have uh, malaise. Malaise really takes it away from the uh, time eater. Quite rude. Uh, we probably want these two together.
Alright. Pretty simple fight from here. Just put the remaining powers in play. Scale up our dexterity even more, and all is well. Dagger Predator here. These two. Alright, with both Envenoms in play, we can do some serious nonsense. We'll see use this now. Foolish, foolish. Sure, might as well. So now we're at uh, the this part of the time eater fight. We've got eleven decks. Time eater has zero strength. It's really no ma no fair comparison here. Poor time eater. Poor Timbo. We've not been kind to you. Let's keep these two. Sweep 100 block. Easy peasy. Let's get rid of that. And more poison. And steady wins the race here. We set up uh, turn one intangible for the next boss fight. I suppose that's okay. Really want to make sure we end the next boss fight with incense burner on four. Failing to do that could cost us dearly. This is another fight that uh, Malaise is going to make very simple for us. The Kunai also makes this pretty simple. Sure, Awaken 1 gains strength when we play powers, but since I gain decks for playing attacks, we can just play all the powers and outscale the bird here. Easy. Get a bullet time. Next turn's gonna be nasty, but not if I... Malaise. We're like a billion. Smoke bomb, get out of here. Nobody invited you to this fight, smoke bomb. for the moment. Um, that's still not solving my problem. Hmm.
That's solving my problem. Cool. Alright, we're in the clear now. We can play any remaining powers we draw. Dexterity and counting. Prepare to have your strength reset, Awakened One. Excellent. And again, we just need to remember to end the fight with Incense Burner on four. It's really the only important thing now. energy this turn. Let's go. Triple Cloak and Dagger. Poison on that first turn is pretty good, actually. I want to kill the Awakened One next turn, if possible. I think that's reasonable. It's got to keep hustling. Set up ink bottle as high as we can. It's the only other priority here. GG. All relics perfectly set up for Act 4. Three really good mastery candidates. This might be an amazing silent run. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this? Enormously chonky silent deck. You ready? You're in Venoms. Dealing 2485. Pretty exciting stuff. One last upgrade. I think we want it to be on Aphra Image for Heart. Let's make sure we get that turn one. How many have 45 cards yet? Deck consistency too. The key is actually that a lot of these cards are duplicates of each other. We have double acrobatics, double dodge and roll, double malaise, double leg sweep, many blade dances and cloak and daggers. These means that even though there's a whole lot of different cards that we could draw into, um, we only ever do get a particular subset each turn. But we're looking really good here. Reflex not too bad. I like a uh, Toy Ornithopter also. Healing us for quite a lot with double Alchemize. That could actually be uh, 20 hit points versus heart. This is really good. I'm going to buy this. 
So 138 is enough to buy footwork and reflex. Let's do it. I'm in. Yeah, and this is why we want to be intangible next turn. Good old next turn. Fun turn one. Prepare to be exploded. Double exploded. me more draw and more energy next turn. That sounds grand. Uh, we should also make sure that we don't um, have incense burner set to the wrong number. I think for heart here we want incense on one, actually. So winning next turn would be ideal. I think we can do that. Why one? Uh, because with the malaise, we're going to be essentially immune to the first cycle of the heart's attacks. And so we want to be intangible for the first attack of the second cycle. Also, because I think cycling back around to three is going to be very hard here. Yeah, let's just do this. Yeah, this way we get um, ink bottle on nine and flower on two again. Those are pretty good. The final gift from In-Law's gift is another Alchemize or a Wraith form. Although I'm probably just going to take the footwork, hilariously. Actually, two max health, also pretty good. Paper Crane is excellent here. Enemies with weak deal dramatically reduced damage. Actually, with Toy Ornithopter, let's go with the third Alchemize. It's another five hit points. Excellent. Triple Alchemize, 48 cards into... The heart here. What an amazing run. Somebody was asking, what's the ideal turn one? Well laid plans is really important turn one. Leg sweep's not too bad either. Okay, this is pretty good. We got adrenaline and a lot of card draw. This is pretty good. And malaise, too. Although, no way to retain, which makes me want to consider Gambler's Brew here. To try to dig down towards the other stuff. You can also just play the malaise right now. That's very good. I think we're going to gamble, though. Keep everything except Acro. Now we can Calc Gamble again to keep digging towards well laid plans, which is the important thing here. We might as well play this first. No, there's one more in the draw pile, right? That's right. Let's gamble again. There's well laid plans. Okay, that's great. Do I want a bullet time now? We can play every card in our hand here. No, I don't want a bullet time now. Perfect. 
Now we can bullet time. Have some poison. Could play the blur, but we're wasting the draw from Ink Bottle if I do so. I don't think I will. Alright, this is the first and most dangerous attack we have to contend with. It's really not that bad, thankfully. There's definitely problems with it. Hey, you. Nothing useful. Probably should have waited on that. No panic. No panicking. I think it's still correct to just get the decks. It's a little damaging, but we never die next turn. No one but to blame but myself for this malaise placement. Okay, that helps a lot. We survived that first cycle, though. We're intangible for the first turn of the second cycle. And we've got a malaise lined up. This is good. Keep one bullet time, one malaise. Okay, that is the multi-hit. It's actually not quite what we wanted to see, but it's also not bad. Just block feet of death for a second here. Beezer. With this much dexterity, nothing can stop us now. What do you got? Sadistic nature. The power. One more. Ah, just a fear pot, which does do five damage. It's pretty cool. Get them riddled with holes. Show them what you can do. Turblam. Extra, extra kerblam. The power. GG. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to follow on Twitch to watch the content live. Click the link in the description below.